What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we're gonna be trying to install some parts on the dually today. We're gonna to be going with a twin intake setup. We're also gonna be possibly messing with the AFT housing a little bit more just to readjust it, to try to get a little bit more power out of it because I know that there's more potential for that pump even on stock you know, injectors and the stock pump and everything else. I know there's a little bit more power in there so we're gonna mess with it just a little bit more but first we're gonna get into this box here because if I'm gonna be taking off the intake horn again, I'd rather reinstall it with something much nicer. So we're gonna see if this works. I bought this kit two years ago actually and never ended up using it because the truck that I bought it for it did not work. So we're gonna be unboxing this right now and see what all it's got. I'm pretty sure it's a Banks twin intake system. If I remember correctly, that's what it should be and it should have everything to go with it. So let's get into it. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So, a bunch of gaskets. A bunch of gaskets here. And I think one of these is, uh, I think these are the option if you wanna do a grid heater delete. I think, not positive on that, but I think that's what those are for. But maybe not, so we'll see. Uh, but then you've got all these gaskets here. Okay, sweet, so it does come with this, which is what you need to take off that intake manifold side and actually have a new gasket, and then this is gonna have the two holes so that you can actually use the twin intake. I don't know what, oh, I forgot about this. A section of intake piping that actually goes from the twin intake down to the intercooler itself. Well, there's everything. Looks like we should be good to go. Didn't come with any new, they did not come with any new intake uh, boots though or anything like that, which is kind of a bummer. I hate reusing old ones. It's not that big of a deal to change them out, but. Change in plan. So we've got the intake horn taken off, bands, and the rubber coupler, I guess is probably what it's called. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm probably not gonna do this today. And the reason I'm not gonna do this today is because installing this new double intake system, you have to remove this, obviously, the intake manifold cover on this side. But here's the issue about this that has me a little bit like, ah, do I really want to do this today? Because I'm gonna to have to redo a bunch of this stuff as soon as I go to put my injectors in. So what I'm gonna do is hold off on this for now, but I am gonna take the AFC housing out because that I can take you know in and out and it doesn't really affect anything else. But I'm gonna to have to take, crack all these lines loose, crack all the injectors loose, pull the whole fuel lines set off. I'm gonna to have to take off this cover, which isn't a big deal, but all the lines are gonna to have to come off. So um, I don't really want to take all the lines off just to put the intake on and then put all the lines back on and reprime the whole truck just for the intake system when I'm going to have to do the injectors here probably within the next, uh, probably within this next week when they show up and then I'm going to have to do the whole thing again. So for now, I'm just going to mess with the AFC housing, get that addressed, make sure that that's situated the way that we want it. And then after that, then we will mess with the injectors and the intake setup at the same time just because i hope you guys understand you know it's not a big deal like i can do it all you know a second time over but i'd rather not since i don't have to and i'm gonna have to do it all anyways as soon as my injectors come in it's just a lot of extra work for really no necessary reason when i don't have to do it at two separate times and i could just wait a few more days and just do it when it makes more sense. So we're gonna get to taking the AFC housing back off today, seeing if we can make a few small changes to that, and I'll tell you what I end up doing to get the change that we want. So what we're gonna be doing differently today that I went back and watched my old video on how I did this the first time that I completely forgot about, we're gonna adjust the star wheel, which is just this big Allen head on top. There we go. 
That'll break loose. Now that we got that out, and we're gonna take the star wheel, it's got like these little teeth on it that looks like almost like a mini gear, and we're gonna make 10 clicks up towards the top side of this, which if this is mounted on your truck, like so, okay? Just like this, you're gonna make it 10 clicks up like towards the top of the engine. And you can use a flathead or whatever, just be very careful, don't wanna break anything off in there. Three, four, Eat. This is supposed to make it smoky, in theory, but you know, it was supposed to help a little bit yesterday too, and I didn't see any different, so <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Out here watching the little one while finishing up the dually here. We got the AFC housing back in, everything is great in terms of installation going taking out and going back in um, let's get this thing started up we're gonna back it out and then we're gonna see if we notice anything different <laughs> to do I mean like it's not the end of the world that the trucks not smoky I mean there's a lot of guys that they love it when their truck runs good and doesn't smoke a lot but I just don't understand like I ground down the back side of that foot you know what I mean there's no fuel plate in it I turn the star wheel I flip the washers in the AFC housing uh, I mean I did seemingly everything that is recommended if you're trying to get a little bit more power and a little bit more fuel and a little bit more smoke and this thing like you can just rev it up you can bog it down you can accelerate hard it just doesn't want to smoke there's just nothing there like it i mean it drives good it has plenty of power i mean it's it's got plenty of power i mean i pulled the tractor around with it and everything else and this thing it, it's a dream to when you're pulling with it but I cannot get that AFC housing adjusted to produce more smoke. Maybe it'll change when we put compounds on it and injectors and stuff, but I'm really, I'm really kind of blown away because I thought for sure after my, you know, star wheel adjustment, I thought for sure that would make a difference. We just did the smoke screw or the power screw or whatever. Nothing. I don't know. I tried. I took it all out again. And I tried again. I just don't understand. If I'm missing something, please somebody inform me. I would love to correct what I'm doing wrong. I might have some parts here for the ETV, so I'm gonna go see if I've got those right now. If I do, I might take a couple minutes here and pop a bunch of clips in on that thing and take out the ones that are just junk and replace them with good ones. That way all the plastics are nice and tight again like they were back when it was new, or at least very close to that. And then we might go pick up something from Tractor Supply, no guarantees, but we might. And then we might also go to our Ohio property and do a little bit of tree stand rearranging stuff over there with the wife and kid. Well, we got the baby sitting in a box with a blanket around him so he can sit up there and watch me. I'm gonna put in some clips on this thing. I've even got some stuff that's supposed to make the plastics all nice and shiny again. We'll see how, I know, it would look so much better if it was clean, so um, we got a pressure wash and everything else the other day. We haven't really ridden it since, but we would like to get all the plastics looking a little bit better, at least all these, these faded plastics here is what I'm talking about. And then we've got a bunch of clips that are supposed to help with all of our missing ones, so let's get to it. Here we've got one missing right down here. We've got one missing there, there, there. Where else are they missing? I think there's like one back in there. There's one right down there. There's a handful, so we're gonna get to it and hopefully it looks a lot better. This thing actually looks so 
stinking good now. Even my wife came out and she's like, what happened to our four wheeler? It looks like almost a new one, you know? Um, the back to black stuff, actually, I'm gonna give you the actual one because the back to black is a totally different brand. This is Car Guys Professional Detailing Plastic Restorer. This thing had like 15,000 reviews on Amazon and it's made in the USA. I'll leave a link to this stuff in the description below and it comes with this little scrubbing pad and all you do is you apply it to this and you rub it into the plastic and it took me five minutes to do the whole ATV and I even put it on the seat. I don't know if you're technically supposed to, but I just wanted to try it out since we already have a new seat cover going on anyway. Um, but it turned out really good. looks really, really great. The only thing that really drives me nuts about this thing, there's this one little crack here. There's one little tiny crack here. And then this stupid toolbox lid is red, essentially. And the tan that he did use to paint it is the wrong tan. So. Other than those couple, I think it was like three little flaws. Uh, I really love it. I haven't started it up today, but I'm gonna start it up because we're gonna trailer it up here. Put a new, brand new battery in it yesterday. And it definitely makes a big difference. We're all loaded up in the Cadillac. We're on our way to our Ohio property right now. We got the ATV. And we're gonna be moving a tree stand and I also kind of just want to take the ATV over here, you know? She was basically begging me to come over here today. She's like, can we please go to the ride? Like, okay, fine, whatever you want, babe. If you guys have not done so yet, 10X entries for the Dooley giveaway end in just over 48 hours. They end on April 12th. Then 10X entries are gone. So if you want to get 10 times the entries towards winning that Dooley that we were trying to make roll coal that is still somehow running totally efficiently and not blowing a bunch of black smoke. All you gotta do is go to ohmgear.com, buy anything off the store, and as soon as you check out, you're automatically entered to win. And no, you do not need a PayPal or Amazon Pay account to check out. If you click PayPal once you get to the checkout page, then it'll pop up the option and click PayPal, and then it says PayPal guest checkout or something, I think is what it says, right? I don't know, it's been a while. I don't know, it. whatever. It says guest something. Just click on it and just you can use- Just know you don't need a PayPal account. Yes, you can just, you just click on PayPal and you can check out with whatever cards you want, however you want to do that, and you don't need any kind of PayPal account. I get so many comments. How come you have to have a PayPal account? Like if you just click the PayPal button, click, it says continue as a guest or with account. It's that simple. So we're out here at the property. We've got little man, got my wife Reagan. We got the four wheeler over here for the first time. And it was fun. We took a couple little laps. You see there's already sticks and roots and stuff stuck up underneath it. I can see actually now. But this is what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna be moving a stand over here. And we actually, on our way back over here, we actually bumped five deer. There were five deer bedded down that got up and took off. This stand right up here to the other side of the property, you guys saw my couple couple videos back, we put up a new setup over here, and then we made a little hinge cut trail to sneak back over there to it and all that stuff. So we don't need this stand 30 yards away anymore. So we're gonna take this setup, move it to the other side of the property, which is where we just saw those deer. And then, uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys back over there, but. That's gonna be the start of it. And then the wife's gonna take the four wheeler for a little joy ride. Well, I have the baby here and taking the stand down. Stand taken down out of here. Let me show you how we got the child fastened in here. Got the tree stand ratchet down on there. We got one of those pull tight straps back here looped through the car seat. So it does not move, and then we got the one through these up here, up over top. You all good? You ready to rock and roll? <laughs> so he's all strapped in there, and this, I mean, this is how we're doing it. Got the stands, platters, platter sections. Actually in this spot, this is the end of a hinge cut line right behind us. So. There's a trail that cuts through actually right by this tree. There's one that cuts through right over here. There's a trail, like an old logging road that cuts right back here behind Reagan. We have a food plot 35 yards away. There's a main feeding field behind here. That's actually the neighbors. We've got a logging road that loops around here. And it just comes in a full horseshoe shape right through here with a bunch of scrapes and 
How many times did we see bucks in this in this general area right here? Um, a lot because they're cruising this edge line, looking out in the field, making rubs. Yeah, so I mean, we saw the biggest buck she saw on the property last year was right here, and trying to get a shot, it was just a pain in the butt. He would not stop. It was super windy that day, probably 20 mile an hour wind in the tree. We also just got the property, didn't really know like how they moved yeah. and how they used the edges and everything like that. But now I feel like we'll be well prepared. Yeah, because we didn't come. we didn't even start hunting on this edge until I mean it was also, almost November. It's, it, there was no shooting lanes at all where we had, you know, our stand set. So you only had a certain window. Yeah. And you were just kind of out of luck. And with a bow, you know, you don't have a lot. <laughs> You're limited to your shots you can take. So. Yeah, and we had to use bow the whole season. So, I mean, that's what I'm thinking is this is a good spot right here. We already hunted this spot a little bit last year. We moved the stand, though, at the last minute because... Well, we were just trying to adapt as we went, but now that the season's closed, we have time all summer to accumulate more stands and get them set. We're gonna do this, and this is a nice spot where we can walk in on this edge, you know, just inside the woods. We're gonna have a nice cleared path. We'll be able to sneak in right behind here, climb up the back of the tree, and not have to penetrate far into the property and disturb a bunch of stuff. We've also got a main big feeding strip, the main one on our property here, about 60 yards out there, and uh, all the bedding is you know, at least 50 yards plus away from this spot. And we don't want it any closer than that because then you're getting too close. And then if the wind swirls at all, you're busted too easily. You don't even get a chance. So um, as long as we have a wind blowing out that away at an angle, that'll be away from any activity that's gonna be coming and going from here. Most of it is all pretty much from this tree back. And so we should be in pretty good shape. So let's get this thing thrown up. a total of 40 minutes just about maybe not quite 40 but close got the stand set up on this stand i actually opted to do a cameraman in a hunter stand on complete opposite sides of the tree sometimes i do one straight out to the main focus point of the area and then i do one like right next to it so you're almost like elbow to elbow close but in this location the tree's so perfectly straight and you can shoot down this way and out behind you to the food plot over there and down this way and so I thought you know it just make more sense to have them set up like this and that way you can have somebody watching complete opposite sides the little one's ready to go is he crying or laughing he's crying <laughs> he's been happy this whole time he's just this last couple minutes he's sick of sitting in a seat so we're done here but that's the uh, that's the update on the property got the stand moved and I think there's only one other location I was gonna put a stand and then we're done with uh, property work here other than like trail maintenance and getting access trails to each stand. But uh, in terms of our locations being finalized fresh after the season so we know in our mind where everything was going on the last season, I think we're good to go. So we're gonna, we're gonna get packed up out of here. Hopefully guys enjoy the video. If you like the uh, outdoor style stuff, plus the ATV stuff, plus the truck stuff. You know, let me know down in the comments. We'll do more of that. For everybody that has not done so yet, enter to win that Dually, the five-speed manual, 12 all Cummins Sport, one-ton truck. Pretty cool. Uh, if you want that truck, we're doing compounds, jet black leather interior. I mean, it's, it's gonna be freaking sick. All you gotta do is go to lmpgear.com, link in description, or just type it in, and every $1 you spend gets you 10 entries only until April 12th, and then that deal is gone. So if you wanna get in on that, hurry on up. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. We love you. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace.